What if I told you that the most powerful AI company on earth isn't NVIDIA? It isn't Tesla or Google or any other company in the Magnificent Seven. And what if it was growing faster and priced cheaper than almost every other tech giant with a business that will never be disrupted? Buying that stock would be a great way to get rich without getting lucky. Your time is valuable, so let's get right into it. First things first, I'm not here to waste your time. This video is all about the Taiwan Semiconductor Manufacturing Company, and here's everything I'm going to cover. How TSMC actually makes their money, why TSMC is still cheap, even with a trillion dollar market cap, why TSMC's biggest risk may never become reality, and of course, what all this means for TSM stock as a result. But let's start with what makes this company so special. TSMC is the world's best semiconductor foundry by far. They don't sell finished chips or consumer electronics under their own brand. Instead, they make money by selling the most advanced, custom-made semiconductor wafers to the world's top tech companies, who reserve TSMC's production capacity years in advance for their own CPUs, GPUs, and other kinds of processors. Let's get specific about what they actually make and for who. TSMC makes the A-series chips for Apple's iPhones and the M-series chips for the iPads, MacBooks, and iMacs. They also make Qualcomm's Snapdragon processors, which power flagship Android phones like the Samsung Galaxy S24 and the Tensor G5 chips that are going into the Google Pixel 10. TSMC makes the Tensor cores for NVIDIA's Hopper H100s and H200 GPUs, as well as the H20 GPUs that NVIDIA sells to China. Oh, and the Blackwell GPU dies that go into the Blackwell B100 chips. They also make the chips for NVIDIA's competitors, like AMD's Instinct MI300s, MI325s, and MI355 accelerators, which compete with NVIDIA's data center GPUs in the West, as well as the Instinct 308s that AMD sells to China. TSMC makes the custom Tranium and Inferentia chips for Amazon Web Services, the custom Tensor Processing Units for Google Cloud, the Maya AI accelerators from Microsoft Azure, the meta training and inference chips for meta platforms, and the full self-driving chips that go into every Tesla car, truck, cyber cab, and humanoid robot. As a result, TSMC has a 90% share of the global AI chip market, which is expected to almost 9x in size over the next 8 years. That's a compound annual growth rate of 31% through 2033. That means TSMC should grow that fast even if their margins and their market share stay the same. But their biggest competition comes from other chip manufacturers like Samsung, Intel, and SMIC, who don't even come close to TSMC in terms of capability or scale, even if you add them all together. So I expect their market share and their margins to actually expand over the course of the AI revolution. Let me show you why. Three quarters of TSMC's revenue comes from advanced processing nodes, which is any node seven nanometers or below. Here's what that means in plain English. A process node refers to the size of the features that a chip fabrication process can make on a silicon wafer. A smaller number means more transistors in a given area, which makes chips more powerful, more energy efficient, or smaller, depending on the needs. For example, the difference between a five nanometer and a three nanometer chip is tens of billions of extra transistors in the same area, which means it can run bigger AI models, better smartphone features, or more cloud workloads that wouldn't be possible on chips made on bigger nodes. TSMC is currently the only company on Earth actually ramping up 2 nanometer chip production with high enough yields for commercial customers in 2025. Apple already reserved and prepaid for all of this 2 nanometer capacity for their next generation A-series and M-series chips for the iPhone 17 Pro and for future Macs. That's a great strategy for Apple, since it gives them a first mover hardware advantage, it guarantees their chip supply, and it keeps their competitors on older nodes. But it's also great for TSMC, because they have guaranteed funding for their latest chip technologies, which gives them security to do the research, development, and refine their next generation processes, which are going to then get reserved again. And that's TSMC's core revenue flywheel. But TSMC doesn't just run the most advanced processing nodes on the planet. They also make custom nodes for their clients. For example, the custom node for NVIDIA is called 4N, which was created specifically for the power, density, and performance requirements of NVIDIA's GPUs. They also have a newer process called 4NP, which is a higher performance version of the 4N node to make NVIDIA's Blackwell B100 and B200 GPUs. 
That means every data center, cloud service provider, and supercomputer that relies on NVIDIA's chips for training and running AI models also relies on TSMC to build them. By the way, half of all companies are already using AI, and the tech sector has shrunk by over 100,000 jobs this year alone. That sounds scary, but what the media isn't reporting is that these same companies are hiring anyone who understands AI. The same is true if you're freelancing or if you run your own business like I do. AI is not optional. It's a competitive advantage that you either have or you don't. That's where Outskill comes in, the sponsor of this video. Outskill is running a two-day AI training to take you from beginner to advanced AI professional in just 16 hours, this Saturday and Sunday. And they're giving the first 1,000 people who sign up with my link a free seat, whether you work in tech or sales, marketing or HR. You'll learn to use 10 of the most powerful AI tools like Make.com and Claude. You'll learn the best practices for prompt engineering and how to analyze data and automate workflows without coding. You'll even learn to build AI agents. Over 4 million people from 40 different countries have already participated, and slots for this one are filling up faster than ever. This is a great way to level up your AI knowledge, get a serious competitive advantage, and understand the science behind the stocks. So make sure to register for your free seat with my link below today. All right, so TSMC earns revenue every time it manufactures and ships a wafer, which is a large disk of silicon that turns into dozens or even hundreds of chips, plus any chip packaging or other custom features that sit on top of them. The more advanced the node, the more they can charge per wafer. The more competitive the market, the more they can charge to reserve capacity. And whoever wins the next wave of AI, smartphones, or autonomous vehicles, TSMC gets paid at every step along the way, making them the perfect stock to get rich without getting lucky over the course of this AI revolution. And now that we understand what TSMC actually does and how they make money, let's talk about their earnings and their trillion dollar valuation next. TSMC reported record revenues of $30 billion for the quarter, which is up almost 18% quarter over quarter and 44% year over year. Their operating margins expanded from 42% last year to 49.6% today. Having almost 50% operating margins doesn't just make them more profitable than almost every hardware, semiconductor, or manufacturing company. It's also better than the average software company, making TSMC one of the most profitable tech companies on the planet. Today, 60% of their revenue comes from high-performance computing and AI data centers. Another 27% comes from smartphone chips, while IoT devices and automotive chips account for the remaining 10%. That means 87% of TSMC's revenue is exposed to the two markets that benefit the most from the AI boom. Data centers are where all the AI model training and inference are already happening today, and smartphones are already hosting AI agents and applications. But let's look at the revenue in a different way. 7 nanometers marks the start of what the industry considers to be advanced chips. 74% of TSMC's total revenue comes from advanced chips today, with 24% coming from 3 nanometer nodes, 36% coming from 5 nanometer, and the other 14% coming from 7 nanometers. All of this advanced chip capacity is fully booked through 2027, making this extremely reliable revenue. And like I said earlier, Apple already reserved and prepaid for all of TSMC's 2 nanometer capacity for the iPhone 17 Pro and for future Macs. So once 2 nanometer chip production becomes available, every company that works with TSMC will want to move up this table to a more advanced node. Nvidia will want more transistors on their chips, and AMD will want to compete. Google will want better performing TPUs, so Amazon and Microsoft will have to keep up. And of course, Apple's biggest competitors will rush in and order as many 2 nanometer chips as soon as they can. That's why I think the launch of their 2 nanometer chip production later this year will be a huge catalyst for TSM stock. But let me tell you something that will put you ahead of almost every Wall Street analyst that covers this stock. While the jump from 7 nanometers to 5, and then 3, and now 2 is a big deal, it's not the only thing that puts TSMC ahead of other companies like Intel and Samsung. It's the advanced packaging methods that happen after a wafer leaves the fab. Why? because bandwidth is the real bottleneck for AI, not transistor count. Said another way, moving data through memory costs more energy than computation. So anything that improves bandwidth 
also improves overall AI performance. There are two packaging technologies that TSMC basically has a chokehold on. The first is called COWOS, C-O-W-O-S, which is short for chip on wafer on substrate. COWOS is a way to connect chips together for ultra-fast bandwidth and low latency. For example, COWOS is how processor cores get connected to stacks of high bandwidth memory. It's also how NVIDIA's two Blackwell dies are connected to create a giant GPU chip that's bigger than modern machines can make. Demand for COWAS packaging more than doubled in 2024, and TSMC's COWAS packaging is fully booked through 2027, even after the massive increases to production capacity, which resulted in TSMC controlling around 90% of the worldwide COWAS output. The second is called SOIC, Systems on Integrated Chips. This is basically a way to stack chips face-to-face -face that results in massive bandwidths between them. This packaging technique can boost chip performance by around 15% without needing to change the underlying chip production node. Chips like AMD's Epic CPUs and MI300X GPUs stack their caches and compute dies using this packaging technique, and companies like Intel and Samsung are at least one generation behind at making it work. And because packaging is deeply tied to a chip's layout, its power, and its heat requirements, a company like NVIDIA or Apple can't just take their designs to one of TSMC's rivals without facing some pretty serious switching costs, including maybe having to redesign the chip altogether. That means advanced packaging doesn't just make TSMC more money, it makes them more sticky. All right, so TSMC is the world's leading chip maker and works with every major tech company. They're unrivaled in terms of capacity and scale, they have the world's most advanced packaging techniques, and they're about to launch their two nanometer production lines. And now that you understand the science behind this stock, let's talk about its price. TSMC just hit a trillion dollar valuation after reporting record revenues and profit margins. That doesn't make this company expensive. In fact, TSM stock is priced well below other companies in the semiconductor industry, with a price to earnings ratio of 20, while the industry average is 31. And they're even more undervalued when you consider that their earnings per share grew by 67% year over year, from $1.50 last year to $2.50 today. As a result, my overall price target for TSMC is just under $300 per share, which implies a $1.3 trillion valuation and roughly a 30% upside from here. But it's not all sunshine and rainbows. So let's talk about their biggest risks next. And if you feel I've earned it, consider hitting the like button and subscribing to the channel. That really helps me out, and it lets me know to make more content like this. Thanks, and with that out of the way, let's talk about TSMC's biggest risks. Hopefully, it's obvious that TSMC doesn't have any risks of competition eating into their market share or margins, or their market shrinking, or their sales slowing down. When Warren Buffett bought over $4 billion worth of TSM stock, Back in 2022, it was because of everything I covered in this video. But in early 2023, Berkshire Hathaway sold every single share, saying that even though it's one of the best managed companies in the world, and no one in the chip industry is in their league, Warren Buffett is unwilling to tolerate the risk that China could invade Taiwan. Now, I'm not going to pretend that I'm an expert in geopolitics, or that I'm smarter than Warren Buffett and his team. But let me point out a few things that convinced me to stay invested in TSM stock over the last few years. Warren Buffett's biggest holding is Apple, and at one point, it was 50% of his entire portfolio. 50, 5, 0. Almost all of Apple's chips are made by TSMC. So Berkshire Hathaway was seriously exposed to this risk long after they sold their last share of TSM stock. And it's not just Apple. Without TSMC, there's no Nvidia, there's no Amazon Web Services, no Microsoft Azure, no Google Cloud. TSMC can't just be shut down and get quickly restarted, especially by outside forces. The specialized equipment, materials, and expert workforce required to keep it all running can't be quickly relocated or replaced by other chip makers like Samsung or Intel. US intelligence estimates that the sudden loss of TSMC could slash up to a trillion dollars per year from global GDP while other forecasts say it would be the single biggest economic shock since the Great Depression. Chip shortages would drive prices up by an estimated 59% overnight. That would cause every market, from automotive and industrial equipment to consumer tech and digital services, to become much less dependable, 
and much more expensive, which would plunge the world's economy into a new spiral of inflation and unemployment. I'm not trying to be dramatic here, but if TSMC stops making chips, we will all have much bigger problems than their stock price, and this really isn't a risk that any investor can avoid, not even Warren Buffett. If you're invested in AI, you're already invested in TSMC. But there are two big factors that mitigate this risk. First, China can't make chips anywhere close to TSMC's most advanced nodes, which means they would face the same massive economic consequences as the rest of the world. And second, every major government and tech company is already diversifying their supply chains as we speak. And TSMC is investing over $100 billion on fabs and packaging plants in the US, Japan, and Germany. So this risk is getting lower over time. So even though it's now a trillion dollar tech titan, I still think that TSM stock is a great way to get rich without getting lucky. Let me know what you think about TSMC's risks and their rewards in the comments. And if you want to see what else I'm buying to get rich without getting lucky, check out this video next. Either way, thanks for watching, and until next time, this is Ticker Symbol U. My name is Alex, reminding you that the best investment you can make is in you.